How are wages likely to feed into the inflation picture at the moment? Because, of course, we heard from the, the budget reply there from Anthony Albanese. That was a centrepiece for him, uh, wanting to see wages rise, particularly in some of those key sectors such as aged care. Um, the unions pushing for up to 5% wage increases. We do have that national wage case, the minimum wage coming up. Yeah. Um, what are the likely effects? Are we going to see it start to come through? Of course, the RBA wants to see <laughs> some wage growth there. Yeah, look... Wages growth is an interesting one. You know, there's two sorts of wages growth, and I think it's very important to distinguish that. One of them is just wages growth, which is keeping up in line with, with um, inflation. That's sort of is the wages growth that nobody really wants. That just leads to sort of wages go up, prices go up, wages go up, prices go up, and no one's actually any better off. And in fact, that's the sort of concern that really central banks are very vigilant about in trying to make sure that that doesn't get out of hand. That's the kind of basis on which they start raising rates. But there's another form of wage growth, which is a lot more important. That's when wages are going up by more than the rate of inflation. That's the kind of thing that we're really after. Now, there's a lot of talk about how that should go on. Basically, what we're saying is how to get productivity rising. Output per hour, which is the fundamental ingredient of higher real wages or wages after inflation. Now, there's lots and lots of talk about productivity, lots and lots of discussion about the need to be a high productive country, um, to be um, using our clever smarts in good ways, but there's not a lot of action on the ground. And there hasn't really been much action on the ground in that front for a very long time. What, but are you the key specifically with policy are you talking about to actually encourage that to increase in productivity? And that's exactly right. That's yeah. the sort of thing that we, we, you're needing. And what are we talking about here? Well. You know, the budget has done some moves in that direction, better infrastructure, skills, mm. digitalization of the economy, that's important. But the real drivers of productivity is actually competition between companies trying to work out how to do it, get a better bottom line, and then being innovative and creative, both in their production processes and in thinking about new goods and services that, that consumers would need. It's about trying to make sure that companies that are a bit slow in picking up the new technologies actually have a real incentive to hurry up and pick it up. It's about planning and zoning laws. It's about pricing things like water and roads and so forth so that people use these scarce resources well. Basically, it's about taking the sort of inputs that we have, labor um, and, uh, and capital machinery, and using them in a clever way and you continuing to search for that. That's the kind of policy environment that many people have talked about. I don't know, there's been reports by the Productivity Commission, the um, Harper mm. Commission, lots and lots of reports, but there's a lot of high discussion and agreement, but not a lot of action. And of course, key to that also is skilling up your workforce. Uh, is enough being done on that front? Did you see enough in the budget, of course, there, uh, the government putting the onus back on the private sector? Uh, they want on the jobs training. Uh, not a lot there as far as uh, tertiary education is concerned. Well. The tertiary education things is sort of a, a bit of an evolution as we think about how to have research go more in a commercial direction and so forth, and there's lots of discussion in that area. More generally, the challenge of the skilling issues is we know the kinds of technologies that are going to be part of the future. We know the kind of the digital approaches, the new machine learning, artificial intelligence, those sorts of things. We know the sorts of things that humans do really well, that kind of creative thinking, that decision-making under uncertainty. We know the sorts of capabilities and skills that are needed. And the question is, how do we train the young people today to see that potential, but also actually to put in the hard yards, learn those things, and then be actually really capable in the future? So it's not just a dollars or numbers. It's actually the quality of the training that's going on. And I think that's you know, an issue that many people are aware of, including the government and other um, at, uh, in other agencies. Many people are trying to do something in there, but it's a continual challenge to make sure the next generation has those talents because that, again, will underpin the higher real wages for that generation too.